Welcome back to the special edition of Truck Tech. We're going to speak today with Eric Bippus, the Executive Vice President of Sales at Hexagon Agility. Hexagon Agility is the nation's largest maker of natural gas systems and tanks for heavy duty trucking. This is important because as we see more opportunity for natural gas with the new Cummins X15 engine, Hexagon Agility is a bigger player. And we are going to talk with Eric about both the products as well as the a potential market as it expands for natural gas. Hope you enjoy it. Eric Bippus, we haven't seen each other in a few months now, but it's good to see you again. I'm glad to have you back on Truck Tech. It's great to be here with you today. Um, now we're with the real deal, right? Yep. I mean, we didn't have a truck in the plant in North Carolina that I remember, That's right. but we had certainly the, this, we had a few other things. I'm gonna play a role here. I'm gonna be a heavy duty fleet owner, which I'm not, sure. but I'm gonna pretend, sure. okay? I want you to talk to me, like I'm trying to figure out whether I wanna do this or not. Right, right, great, no, that's great. Well, it certainly is exciting. It's exciting to have the truck here and you as a, as a potential fleet and, a, and, a, and a, uh, a customer of compressed natural gas, we're very excited with the new Cummins 15 liter that we spoke about before. Now it's out, it's going into production in the next 90 days. Orders are being filled for that right now. And this particular unit here is a Kenworth uh, powered by the Cummins X15N. And for a new adopting fleet or a fleet that doesn't understand infrastructure, how am I gonna fill it? The beauty of this is we have our back of cab, 175 diesel gallon equivalent, Pro Cab H, Pro Cab. We have our side mounts. This particular unit has two 30 gallon side mounts on each side. You can go up to 45 gallon on each side, which would give you roughly 265 diesel gallon equivalents, and you could easily get 1,200 miles per inch. Now that depends on your payload. Are you going up and down hills? Are you at 60,000 pounds or 80,000 pounds? All of that matters, but it gives that new adopting fleet the comfort to say, am I going to be able to make my route? When you can cover 1,200 miles, you fill a lot of gaps in infrastructure. So one of the main selling features of this is, is the range capability when you compare it to other clean fuel technologies that are out there like EV, which is has its place, but we're seeing now with some of the fleet user experience, it's probably 250 to 200 miles or less in charitable. a heavy duty application. <laughs> yeah. I think you're being, from what I've heard, you're being charitable, but you know, here, <laughs> here's the thing, uh, you know, your role with the value chain here. I yeah. mean, we, we certainly, we talked to, you know, uh, Kenworth, which made the truck. Right. We've talked to uh, uh, Clean Energy, which, you know, makes the uh, RNG, which I think is the big winner on this. Really I've is. heard you on this subject before and what uh, RNG can really do for the emissions profile, yeah. which, you know, whether the, 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 the fleet is into that or not, they get that benefit, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we're seeing much more RNG coming into the into the mix. So, so it does feel like, uh, not my favorite word, but it does feel like the ecosystem is coming together. It sure is. I mean, if you, the early days of compressed natural gas back 2012, 2013, 2014, it was all about ROI. What is the, the, the price difference between diesel and compressed natural gas? Today, that's an important piece of it. Fleets are for-profit businesses. They've got to be able to deploy technology at scale that has a payback. But the carbon intensity score, decarbonizing heavy duty transport, meeting emission regulations coming up in EPA 2027, now you've got renewable natural gas in the pipeline, usable in these with a, a negative carbon intensity score, depending on the source of the sure. renewable natural gas. If it's from dairy, certainly could be negative 300% versus diesel. Uh, if it's wastewater, it could be a little bit less. But typically, you know, what we're seeing now is in California, RNG is 97, 98% of all the fuel used in heavy duty trucking is renewable natural gas. In the rest of the country, it's approaching 80%, high 70s uh, as a percent of RNG. So really, it's no longer just about the ROI. It's about, hey, I can really decarbonize my heavy duty fleet with a viable option. But we heard, you know, we heard Clean Energy talk about the ROI is still pretty darn good. Because, it is, yeah. You know, I don't know what the actual payback is on, on you know, buying a system and, and doing that. Maybe you can help us there. But I, I feel like if you're, if you're buying your fuel at $2 equivalent, to diesel, mm -hmm. it's not going to take too, too long to sort of make it up on the fuel side. I mean, fuel's number two, I think, in overall costs, right? Yeah, you're looking at, you know, typically under four years, and in many cases under three years, depending on how many miles you're running per year, that you have a, a 
positive ROI when you look at the disparity of a compressed natural gas truck versus today's diesel truck. Now that's going to be even better in a few years when EPA 2027 hits and you have all these NOx requirements that are going to hit diesel. That's going to add a significant amount of cost to a diesel truck and close that gap on selling price between a compressed natural gas and a diesel truck. So we and expect that to go even lower. That's twenty-five to forty thousand dollars to what I've heard in terms of you know having that's, that. That's second, what we're hearing too. That second uh, uh, cleaning system or, yep. or you know SCR system, uh, you know. So so yeah, you get a, a big catch up at that point. You know, it's interesting too, though. I, you know, when we were in your facility in North Carolina, uh, you know, you're expanding. You're going to make are. some more tanks. We are. You know, we are. and and uh, uh, you know, I think I shared with you when we were together before that, you know, Cummins actually thought they might see 10% penetration. Well, now, you know, recently we're hearing maybe 15%. So maybe we're getting a little excited, but the yeah. fact is it's not going to be one or 2% anymore. Yeah, no, it, that, that's for sure. And it doesn't sound like 10% doesn't sound like much, but when you think 350,000 vehicles going into the park every single year, today, 97% are still diesel. I mean, made very little penetration going to 10%. Now we're talking about 35, 45, maybe 50,000 compressed natural gas vehicles going into the market every single year. So yeah, we're, we're ramping our capacity, both in Lincoln, where we manufacture the cylinders that go yep. inside the tanks, but also in Salisbury, North Carolina, where we met before, we're adding cylinder capacity there. So under the same roof, we'll be completely vertically integrated, making our cylinders, putting them together in the cabs, and actually installing them on the vehicles uh, at our Salisbury plant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you've got plenty of potential customers. We talked about this too, right up the road, right? I mean, in, right. in North Carolina. That's right, right? You know, that's they, right. Yeah. They could take these. Um, uh, you know, it, it is interesting too, though, when we talk about some of the value chain, as, mm -hmm. as we talked, as we discussed, you were going to sell me, a few minutes ago I started and I kind of came out of character, yeah. but you were going to sell me a truck or a few, right. a few trucks actually, right. you know, a few systems. Right. What are you going to tell, how are you going to do yeah, that? Yeah, so especially if you're a fleet that holds its assets, keep your truck till the end of life. And you look at this and say, I'm going to spend a lot of money on a fuel system and a truck. What happens when that truck hits 800,000 miles or a million miles? Do I repower it? What, what do I do? So we're, we're looking at total cost of ownership of our fuel systems. So it's not just the upfront cost and how can we have a quick payback for you. But as the fleet owner, do you have the ability to have a second life for these? And, and absolutely. We design these systems the last 20 years. In some cases, we think they can go 25 years. So... When we looked at total cost of ownership of our fleet package that we have at end of life, we'd like to be able to offer you either a buyback program. So we're looking at doing some programs like that, a certified pre-owned where we can pull the system off and put it into a secondary marketplace. So that's another aspect that we're trying to amortize the cost of the, of the fuel system over one, maybe even two lives of trucks. Well, that circularity, because I don't know that you necessarily recycle these but you certainly have reuse capabilities what you seem to be discussing here yeah and and the idea that you're thinking that through now right as a as a first time if i'm let's just say i'm going to buy 10 trucks and i get yeah. 10 of these uh you know i'm going to get how much am i going to get eight hundred thousand miles uh on them is that what i'm gonna oh get? yeah easily i yeah. mean it's okay. not this will not limit the life of the truck it's more around the powertrain and the sure. engine and, and when you're going to repower that the fuel systems themselves like i said we certify them to the tanks for 20 years. We have, uh, as part of the Hexagon Group, a, a company called Digital Wave that does modal acoustic testing where we can listen to the tank at the 10 year point and understand how much life expectancy is left in that tank. So this is not a limiting factor of the vehicle itself. It's more around the powertrain. How sure. is it maintained over the course of the life? Renewable natural gas and diesel have roughly the same you know, life expectancy from a, from a mileage standpoint. It really comes down to the maintenance, but this would not be the limiting factor for sure. Yeah. Okay, so so the feedback from early, early drivers mm -hmm. of this is, hey, you know what? I don't have to complain about torque anymore. I don't have to complain about it being underpowering, going up a That's hill right. and things like that. That becomes sort of word of mouth over time. Right. Uh, you know, and, and this was the biggest holdback on the 12 liter, or maybe sure. the nine liter, but you know, definitely on the 12 liter natural yeah, gas. Sure. And it's something that, you know, does seem to be the thing that gets this over the hump, if you will. Yeah. Uh, yeah, without a doubt, when you look at, let's just say 350,000 new Class 8 trucks going into the marketplace per year, the 12 liter was suitable for about 100,000 of those, those day cab operations, return to base at the end of the day. It's roughly consistently 100,000 trucks per year that you had that 400 horsepower engine could service. When you went beyond that, now you start getting into higher payloads, longer haul applications. 
sleeper applications where you may have tandem drivers, in some cases triple drivers where they're going long distances, really required the up to 500 horsepower type of, type, type of power under the hood. Now we can cover that, so we're opening up an additional 250,000 Class A trucks that we could say, we have a solution for you now. Yeah. And when you look at that, that piece of it, that's really hard to solve for because of the energy consumption. It's gonna take battery and hydrogen, which we believe there's a hydrogen future as well. This is available today at scale. Sure. Well, and I, I this, the other news that I heard, I've, I've been hearing, you know, 300, mm -hmm. or excuse me, 3,000 uh, X15Ms this year. Now I'm hearing from a pretty good source, you know, Cummins, yeah. yeah. 5,000. So maybe, you know, you wanna keep moving and get that thing going down there in North Carolina and yeah, that's rolling, right? right? That's keep right, yeah. We're, we're pushing the operations team pretty hard to, to ramp up for capacity. We've got, uh, the orders are coming in right now. We're super excited about it to see those early orders come in. Even before it's in full production, a lot of excitement around it. And I got three trucks here. You've got, a, you've got though, Eric, you've got a big education job that you want to get done. In yeah. fact, you've done yeah, something yeah. with that. We have. We uh, have. You know, nice picture here. Actually, I think this is interactive and people watching the podcast can actually shoot that if they want to. Yes. Uh, the uh, QR code yep. and get your ebook, which is uh, sort of the nuts and bolts, really. Of It is. It's, it's really what we've done is we worked with not just our own information and data, but our collaborative partners, some of which I think you've spoken to, whether it be infrastructure people from clean energy and Opal Fuels, Cummins Engine certainly has put into this. We've got some great case studies from fleets in here to, to say, OK, if I'm a new adopting fleet, how, could, how do I spec my truck? What should I consider on infrastructure? What, what could I expect on a ROI? Everything's in here. It's a, roughly a 26 page, page booklet that we put together and we highly encourage people to scan the code and take a look well, at we'll it. We'll take a shot at it right there and hopefully it doesn't show up on, we don't open it into the podcast, but the, the <laughs> yeah. viewers can see it. Great. Eric, great to see you. Good to be with you again. Nice Thanks talking so to much. you. Okay. Great, thank you. Yep.